Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We have a pretty special and rare base in the studio today. We have a Schecter Japan Pro Gauge Series Mustang style base. You don't see very many of these around. Let's check it out. Firstly, I want to say a very warm thank you to all the viewers out there who have taken the time to like these videos and to leave a comment. Especially, I really want to thank everyone who has subscribed to this new channel. It means so much to me and I'm very, very thankful. On to the bass. This is made by Schechter Guitars in Japan and it is a Mustang style bass. It is a pretty rare bird. As I understand it, uh, Schechter Guitars has two divisions. They have their USA based and they also have a Japanese division. And this was, uh, as I understand it, a Japanese model that was made in Japan and made exclusively for the Japanese market. So you don't often see very many of these outside of Japan. So just like a Fender Mustang bass, this Schechter here has a 30 inch scale measured saddle to nut. It has pretty standard Mustang features, has an alder body, four bolt, bolt on maple neck, and it is a rosewood fingerboard. This has a Seymour Duncan designed Mustang style uh, pickup and it is entirely passive. The controls are just volume and tone. I really like these vintage style uh, bent metal uh, slotted threaded saddles. I think there's something special tonally about these bridges. Uh, so I was very surprised to see that this base came stock with the style of bridge. Compared to a Japanese made uh, Fender Mustang, this is not a string through body, which I actually prefer. I think now that I've had several uh, bases that gave me the option of both top load or string through, I think my preference uh, is actually top load. I think it sounds better, but more importantly, it, it actually feels better uh, under my fingers. Now I realize that is a very subjective and personal thing, but for me, I prefer the top load. So I was really happy to see that it came with this style of bridge. Another feature I really like, especially with the changing climates here in Winnipeg and Canada, is having a very easy to access uh, truss rod adjustment. And this one is located at the heel here, but there's a nice route here through the body and the pick guard allowing for easier access. And this is very different than some of the Japanese Fender Mustangs where you have to either route your own uh, heel truss rod access or you need to take the whole pick guard off or sometimes with the older fenders you need to take the whole neck off in order to gain access to uh, the truss rod. And that's just not my thing. I really want easy access, especially with all the changing humidity and the changing temperatures where I live. Another feature I like on this base is having slightly lighter than the traditional open gear tuners, Fender style. These are not exactly lightweight tuners, but there is less metal in these compared to a Japanese Fender. So I do appreciate having less weight here at headstock, which might help with the balance. Let's hear some of the sounds we can get from this bass. Let's start with the master volume all the way up and the toe knob all the way down. Let's roll the tone up up to about 25%. Now let's roll the tone up up to about 50. Tone 
tone off up to about 75%. Tone knob all the way open. Now let's put this bass up to a drum track and we'll see how it sits with the drums. We're going to have three passes. First one, we're going to have the tone knob at 25%. Next one, tone knob at 50. And then a third pass, we we'll have the tone knob at 75%. Let's hear it with the drums and we're going to come back and talk about it. Let's go. Well, I hope you enjoyed some of the tones from that playing example. Please let me know what you think and leave a comment below. What are my thoughts? I think this bass is a sleeper hit and I'm quite surprised that uh, it is not more popular uh, or more readily available because I think it sounds great. I think this bass uh, has more low mids and a kind of a gruntier, more burly mid-range compared to uh, my other Mustang basses. And I think that comes down to having this Mustang style pickup. The output is similar to the Aguilar in, uh, in my F bass, but there's definitely more pronounced uh, low mids. Uh, it's, it's not as deep and it doesn't extend as low uh, as a, a precision style pickup, but it has that kind of mid-range hump that really allows it to poke through the mix. I think on this bass, with the tone knob all the way rolled off, it's a bit on the muddy side and it lacks clarity. But I think where it really shines is in that 25 to 50% range of the tone knob. Higher than that, it starts to get a little more strident and a little more aggressive for my tonal taste. 
but I think uh, with a tone knob between 25 and 50%, I think is kind of the sweet spot uh, for me. Where do I think this bass uh, would shine in a musical context would be in a denser mix, uh, such as uh, you know indie rock or a rock style genre uh, with lots of kind of heavily distorted guitars, where you really need your bass to poke through a little bit more. I think this bass would really fit that role well. Let's talk about some of the things I really like about this bass. I think the 30 inch scale uh, is very comfortable and it's a very familiar scale for me to play. This nut uh, width is 1.5 inches, so it's very similar to a Japanese Fender Mustang and it's the same width as a jazz bass. So having the smaller uh, nut width and the smaller scale length does allow for pretty easy access and pretty easy playing. The neck profile here is also very comfortable. It's slightly thicker uh, than, uh, than my F bass, but compared to a Japanese Fender, it's quite similar. Where it differs from a Japanese Fender Mustang is that the fingerboard is uh, quite a bit flatter. Uh, the radius of a Japanese Fender uh, is, is smaller and rounder, but this is a flatter uh, fingerboard. So I think that would really come down to kind of what you are most comfortable with. And for me, because I do essentially like to uh, bend the strings here and there, I actually prefer a slightly flatter uh, fingerboard. So I feel very comfortable uh, on this neck. Now let's talk about some of the things I uh, either don't like or I'm kind of not sure about. Let's start with the bridge. I know I mentioned earlier that I really like these style bridges. However, what I found with this particular one is the, the screws they used are probably two millimeters too long. Um, and that doesn't affect the playability at all. Uh, with one exception, I think. If you do a lot of thumb style uh, palm muted type playing, so if you play like this a lot, kind of Pino Palladino style, uh, then you might find that the screws might kind of scratch and dig into uh, your palm. From a practical point of view, what kind of gets me with the longer screws is if you're putting this in a gig bag uh, and sliding it in without opening it all the way, you run the risk of kind of ripping up the inside of your gig bag. That's just something to, uh, to think about. You could take all of these out and file them down, uh, but that seems like a lot of work. Let's talk about the neck attachment to the body. This is a standard full bolt uh, kind of fender style plate. But the interesting thing about this base is this body here is not parallel to the neck. It actually curves uh, and is slanted inwards. Now, I think the rationale for that is to allow for higher fret access here without uh, your palm digging into the, uh, the heel. But where I think it falls potentially a little short is the screws are actually not perfectly perpendicular to the plate. They are still perpendicular to the neck. So you really notice it with these two front screws here uh, that the screws are not perfectly flush with the neck plate. They're kind of at a bit of an angle. Not a deal breaker, it's just an oddity. And I think the last thing I'm gonna point out is, is the headstock. I think from a design point of view, it's a bit on the bigger side. And I think if they were to, to shrink the headstock down, maybe kind of 10, 15, 20%-ish, make, make the whole thing proportionally smaller, I think it would also look better. Uh, but more importantly, and I'll put up a, a bigger picture here, what I really like to see is a perfectly straight string pull. So I want the strings to go across the nut and stay in a straight line uh, as it reaches the tuner. And I think that aids in both tone, but more importantly, uh, tuning stability, especially if you're really aggressive with string bending. But here, if, if you're seeing the picture that because I think the headstock is just a smidge too large, uh, the strings, especially the, the, the E and the G here, uh, do kind of splay out at an angle uh, before it hits the tuner. Again, not a deal breaker, but just an oddity. In conclusion, I think this Schecter Pro Gauge Japanese made Mustang style bass, I think that it's a sleeper hit. 
these, uh, these sent me back about a thousand dollars Canadian uh, with shipping from Japan. I ordered this off eBay. I'm very happy with it. I'm glad I got it. Uh, it fulfills a different musical role than some of my other short scale basses. It sounds different than the F bass. It plays great. I think it looks fabulous. If you can find one, I'd grab one. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. In an upcoming video, I'm going to be comparing this Japanese made Schecter with this Fender Japanese Mustang. They both have the same pickups. They both have the same wood combinations. This one has round wounds and this one has Tomastic infill flat wounds. So stay tuned for that video.